Buongiorno a tutti e benvenuti eh, alla conferenza stampa di The Dead Don't Bird. Eh, I morti non soffrono ed è con grande piacere che vi presento il Viggo Mortensen, sceneggiatore, regista, interprete, produttore e autore delle musiche. <ride> Allora, come sapete, eh, The Dead on Third è la, op la sua opera seconda da regista e questa sera riceve eh, il, il premio alla carriera e domani sarà protagonista anche di una, di una masterclass a cui naturalmente siete eh, invitati a partecipare e non è la prima volta a Roma, eh, era con Appalusa, Good, eh, Captain Fantastic eh, e Green Book questi sono quelli che ricordo, forse anche qualcun altro, ma... Alla triste. Alla triste. Ecco, allora, eh, naturalmente eh, vi lascio subito la parola. Eh, volevo soltanto cominciare con il chiederti di raccontarci qualcosa. Sappiamo che anche questo film, come il primo, ha avuto una ispirazione eh, che arriva da tua madre. E, e quindi se puoi raccontarci un po' ehm, qual è stata la scintilla e come si è sviluppata questa idea a partire da questa ispirazione. Uh, I'm gonna answer in English because it'll go quicker. Uh, I'll be more efficient, I think. So I hope that's okay. Uh, well, I started writing this movie, uh, this western, not knowing it was going to be a western, just writing, it was 2020, during the lockdown. At the time I was in Spain, in Madrid, which next to the north of Italy was the worst place for quite a while uh, on the planet, as far as COVID and restrictions and mortality and problems. And so during a few months in Madrid, you could not, where I was, when this happened and then you couldn't leave, You couldn't go more than 250 meters from your house, and so... And if you went out of your house, you had to do a police everywhere, and you had to be going to the nearest shop to buy food, or fix your computer, or go to a pharmacy, that was it. Or, and you, or you had to have a dog or something. People did crazy things. Sometimes they had, like, a stuffed animal, and they were dragging it. <laughs> chickens, and, but we had a dog, so I would go out. And, but most of the time I was locked inside, so I wrote a couple of stories, and this was one. And it began, I have some books from the early 20th century that were my mother's books when she was a little girl, and they are hardcover with color illustrations of medieval knights and adventures, and, And I knew she used to read these books, and knowing her personality, very independent person, um, curious about other people, had her own strong opinions, um, psychologically quite a strong person, even though an ordinary woman, my mother. So this was the idea I started writing about what I imagined her to be like as a little girl in the place where she grew up, this forest and using her imagination. <clears throat> and then I thought, well, where do you put such a person who's independent and as a woman, as a girl, and then as a woman who is free? Maybe I'll put her in the 19th century on the Western frontier because it will be more difficult for her. And then I started writing this and I said, okay, well, so then it's a Western. And I said, well, I like Westerns. Uh, I grew up watching them like most girls and boys of my generation. There was lots of Western series on television. And sometimes you could see still Westerns in the movie, in the cinema. Lots of times there were old Westerns on TV, so. And I was riding horses when I was little, so I liked everything about them. So I thought, okay, a Western. I, I started to write that, and that's, that's how it happened. Allora,